This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yaseen wal Quran al Hakim. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. So inshallah we'll pick up today from where we left off yesterday and you know by now inshallah everybody's got their word. This will be a continuing series inshallah. We did the first four ayat of Surah Yaseen yesterday. Yaseen wal Quran al Hakim in Mecca min al Mursaleen ala suratim mustaqim. So we did these first four ayat along with the introduction yesterday. Insha'Allah, today we'll be doing ayah number five, ayahs number five, six, and seven. We'll be doing three ayat today, insha'Allah. So ayah number five, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tanzil al Aziz al Rahim. Tanzil al Aziz al Rahim. So what we had learned previously is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started Surah Yasin by mentioning some of the huruf al Muqatta'at, which we talked about yesterday the power and the eloquence of these these ayat, these disjointed letters. It catches the attention of the listener and humbles even the most knowledgeable person. Well, Quran al Hakim, Allah swore by the wise or the authoritative Quran. In Nakala min al Mursaleen, you most definitely, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you most definitely are from. Those individuals who have been sent by the ultimate authority, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to deliver a message. And what is the crux of that message? To bring mankind onto the straight path. Surah al Mustaqim. So now, ayah number five says, Tanzil al Aziz al Rahim. The brief summer, uh, translation of this is, It has been sent, or that which has been sent, from the one who is Aziz and Rahim. Uh, I'm, I'm using the Arabic on purpose, I'll explain what these attributes of Allah, they mean in just a minute, inshallah. So the first thing is, like we always do, let's break it down word for word and then try to extract some lessons from this. The word tanzim, tanzim, this comes from the root of the word which means to send something down. Actually the real basic root of the word means to descend, to come down. In this particular form of tanzim, taf'in, it means to send something down. But here's the thing, in the Arabic language, and not just within Arabic, but within the Qur'an, there is another form of this same word, which also means to send something down, and that is the word inzal. Inzal. It means to send something down, and tanzil means to send something down. Both of these words, and both of them occur in the Qur'an. In fact, in today's recitation in Taraweeh, when I started Surah Ali Imran, I recited the third ayah of Surah Ali Imran, Allah says, نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَأَنزَلَ التَّوْرَاتَ وَالْجِينَ He says, نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ About the Qur'an, he uses the word, نَزَّلَ One form of it, which means, He sent down. Then later on in the ayah, when Allah is talking about the Torah and the Injil, Allah again says, He sent down the Torah and Injil, but He doesn't say it with the word Nazzala, He says, Anzal. You can hear the difference. Nazzala, Anzal. It's a different word. So, what's the difference between the two? Because you and I understand, we know at this point that the Quran is very divine, it's very precise. These are not interchangeable words. We can't substitute one for the other. It's not potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Rather, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He says nazzala, He meant nazzala. When He said anzala, He meant anzala. <laughs> so what's the difference? Let's figure it out. Inzal, anzala means to send something down all at once. At once to send something down. The previous divine scriptures, like the Torah and the Injil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them down as complete books. All at once they were revealed. But was the Qur'an revealed all at once in the form of a book to mankind? No. It was revealed little by little by little. Revelation at a time over the span of almost, over the span of almost 23 years. Almost 23 years. Over that entire span, the Qur'an was revealed little by little by little. Tadrijan, as they say in the Arabic language, little by little. And the word nazzala, tanzil, is used to give the meaning of when something is sent down 
a portion at a time, a part at a time, little by little. Inzal, all at once. Tanzeel, little by little. And so that's the difference. So when Allah talks about Torah and Injil, He says, Anzal. When He talks about the Quran, He says, Nazzal. But let's go even a step further than this. Even about the Quran, the Quran itself, some places Allah says, Anzal. Some places He says, Nazzal. Now let's make sense of that. About the Quran itself. In Surah Al-Qadr, everybody knows the small surah from Juzahamba. Inna an zannahu. Inna an zannahu. Anzal. Anzalnahu. We most definitely sent it down. Fi Laylat Al-Qadr. In the night, the night of power. The night of Qadr. Another place, in Surah Al-Baqarah, which talks about the month of Ramadan. Allah says, Shahu Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, alladhi Unzila fi Quran. Again, the word anzala is used. The, the word that the Quran was revealed in its entirety in the month, in this month. But then we also know, you and I know historically as a fact, Allah sent the Quran down little by little. So what's the say? How do we make sense of this this apparent contradiction? In Surah Al in Surah Al Qadr, when Allah says Allah sent down the Quran in the night of power, in the night of Qadr. He's talking about sending it down from Loh al Mahfur, where the Quran was preserved, the preserved tablet, where it was preserved. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent it down from there to the Sama, the sky nearest the earth, and then from there Jibreel alayhi salam would bring it down little by little to the Prophet. That happened in the night of Qadr, and of course the night of Qadr is within the month of Ramadan. So that's the explanation. Everywhere else Allah talks about the Quran and uses the word. Nazala, like here in Surah Yasin, he says, Tanzeel. The Quran was sent down little by little. So that's what the word Tanzeel. Look at the depth of the word itself. The word Tanzeel means to send down something little by little. Now let's, let me even explain this a little bit. What's the significance of sending down the Quran little by little? The significance of it is, is Allah is giving the important, the, the Quran a lot of importance. He's almost teaching us. Allah is teaching us. He's showing us practically that the Qur'an is meant to be digested, approached, understood, absorbed, internalized, little by little. Little by little. Just like Allah sent it down a little by little. So even though now we have the Qur'an completely preserved in its entirety, in its complete form with us, we will still be able to learn, study, absorb, internalize, practice, live the Qur'an a portion at a time. Tanzeel. Now, who was this Tanzim? Who was it sent down from just any random person? Remember, the beginning of Surah Yasin is establishing the truth of the Quran, but more importantly, the validity, the, the sanctity of the Prophethood of Muhammad. Establishing that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. So, this Tanzim, this that which is being sent down a little portion at a time upon Muhammad isn't being sent down from some random place. From some, from anybody? Al-Aziz, Al-Rahim. And this is referring to Allah. Al-Aziz is the attribute of Allah, which means He is the one that dominates and nobody can dominate Him. He dominates, but He is never dominated. Powerful, firm, strong, dominating. That is what Al-Aziz means. Al-Rahim comes from the root word of mercy, Rahmah. It means the one who is constantly merciful. Constantly merciful. Now these specific attributes of Allah being used are very important as well. Because the, in the next few ayat, in ayah number 6 and 7, Allah is going to talk about the people who reject the Qur'an. We're going to study right now. The next two ayat we study are going to talk about people who don't listen to the Qur'an. They reject the Qur'an. They refuse the Qur'an. They choose not to believe in the Qur'an. So for them, Allah mentions that He is Aziz for them. He is firm, He is strong, He is powerful, and He is dominating. His warning, he's giving them a warning that his punishment will dominate these people. The next is that in ayah number 11, إِنَّ مَا تُنْذِرُ مَنِ اِنْتَمَعَ الذِّكْرَ وَخَشْيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ Allah talks about people who do take the message of the Qur'an. They listen to it, they learn it, they understand it, and they live it. About them, Allah is mentioning His attribute, Ar-Rahim. To them, He will be very, very merciful, constantly merciful to them. تَنْزِيلَ الْعَزِيزَ الرَّحِيمِ In the ayah number 6, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِتُنْذِرَ قَوْمًا مَّا أُنْذِرَ آبَاؤُهُمْ فَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ What this roughly 
translates to, and then we'll get into the explanation is, so that you may warn a people that their forefathers were not warned, فَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ Therefore, they are, in, they are completely heedless. They are in a state of heedlessness. Now, what does this exactly translate to? What does it mean? The complete breakdown of it. This ayah requires just a little bit of a historical explanation. We all know Ibrahim alayhi salam, who was kind of considered the, he's the forefather of the prophets and the messengers, and from him started the two major chains of prophethood, which also was a dispute there at that time as well. There were some of the Banu Israel, the Jewish tribes, and then there were the Arabs, the Arabs, the who were Banu Ismail. So Ibrahim alayhi salam had two sons, Banu Ishaq, Banu Ishaq, and then Banu Ismail. So literally two progenies started from Ibrahim alayhi salam. The children of Ishaq and the children of Ismail. The children of Ishaq were people amongst whom many, many messengers came. In fact, the majority of the messengers that are mentioned within the Qur'an came from the progeny of Ishaq alayhi salam. I mean, Zakariya, Sulaiman, Dawood, Yahya, Isa, Musa, they are all from Banu Ishaq. So they all came from the children of Ishaq. Banu Ismail did not get any messengers until the Prophet Muhammad So for these Arabs, the, the divine message, divine revelation had not come to them at the least for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, if not more, thousands of years. The, the message had not come to them. So Allah says that this book has been sent down, has been revealed to you from Al-Aziz Al-Rahim. Why? What's the purpose of sending this book down? So you can warn these people. Who are these people? Their forefathers were not warned. And as a result of their forefathers not being warned, Allah did not say, Allah says, in the nominal form, in the noun form, they, these people are drowning in heedlessness. Heedlessness is kind of a fancy, kind of a big word, I'll make it simpler, a little bit simpler. People who are just unaware, just oblivious to what reality is, lost, just completely drowning in their <coughs> obliviousness, their, 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 um, their complete lack of awareness of what's going on and what's reality. Some of the scholars even mentioned that this غَافِلُونَ is thought is, there are multiple forms of غَفْلَة being heedless, being unaware. Some are just accidental, some are a little more intentional. That these people, they had an intentional form of غَفْلَة amongst them as well. They chose, they wanted to be oblivious. You know sometimes somebody's kind of lost, kind of oblivious, has a lack of purpose in his life. You sit down and you talk to him, so what are you doing with your life? And then he, he listens to what you're saying. He makes a change in his life. But sometimes you sit down with a person, he seems lost in life, and you try to talk to him about it, and he says, you know, just, I'd rather keep it that way. I'd rather you not tell me, or try to remind me what I should be doing. I kind of like the way things are. And that was, a, a, this was a bit of the situation of the people of Makkah. Allah is saying, look, their forefathers were not warned. So guidance has not come to these people for a very, very long time. So it'll take longer for the message to absorb, for them, for them to be able to understand what's being said. But at the same time, Allah is also hinting at the fact that listen, there amongst some of them, there is this element of, they like the way things are. They kind of know that they're lost. They know they're heedless. They know they're unaware. And they're kind of content with that. They're very, very comfortable in this situation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them of this. Uh, Allah SWT is telling the Prophet ﷺ, this is the purpose of the revelation of the Qur'an. And in Surah Al-Qasas, ayah number 46, Allah points to the same thing where He says, So that you can use this Qur'an to warn a people that no warner had come to them before you. Nobody came to warn them before you came. So that's why the Qur'an has been given to you. The last thing I want to mention about this ayah before we go to ayah number 7 is, another powerful thing, Allah is saying, what is the purpose of Qur'an? He said, لِتَزْهِينِ جُدْرَانِكُمْ He gave you the Qur'an to decorate your walls. He gave you the Qur'an to uh, be recited at your weddings. Those are, I'm not trying to degrade or downplay those things. The, the Qur'an is the most beautiful thing. So if I'm going to put up a random painting of a forest, what, what's wrong with me having Bismillah on my wall? 
You know, and if I'm going to, rather than start my wedding with a song, why not we'll start it with a recitation of the Quran? There's nothing wrong with those things per se. But when we completely, um, we, we, we basically, um, we treat the Quran as if that's its only functional purpose. We limit, we restrict the Quran to decoration and formality and opening of auspicious occasions. That's where we run into a problem. The main purpose of Quran is to wake people up. In the Tundira. So that you can wake them up. You can warn them. What are you doing with your life? And that's the main purpose of the Quran. All of us, that's the relationship we need to strive to develop with the Quran during this month of Ramadan. Let the Quran be my own personal wake up call. And that's the same thing we need to establish within our communities and our societies as well. That that's the functional role that the Qur'an serves. That's its purpose within our communities. It wakes people up out of them being lost. Even if they've been lost for generations, as these people were. In the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِهِمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Ayah number 7. The brief translation of it is, most definitely, the word has been confirmed upon ma the majority of them, most of them. So therefore, they will not believe. Therefore, they will not believe. Now, one other thing the scholars point out is that the previous ayah, the Prophet ﷺ, the Qur'an tells us, مَمَا أُسَلَّكَ إِلَّا كَفَّةَ النَّاسِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا The Prophet ﷺ was sent as a messenger for all of humanity, all of mankind. But the first addressees, the first people that his message was addressed to, the first recipients of his da'wah, his message were the Quraysh, were the Arabs. And so they were the initial receivers of the message. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about them specifically. Now he tells the Prophet in ayah number 7, your job, he told him in ayah number 6, your job is to warn them. Use this Quran to warn them, wake them up, snap them out of this deep sleep that they fall into. But in ayah number 7, Allah is telling the Prophet the reality of the matter. لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْمِ Most definitely the lam is for ta'keed and the qad is for further ta'keed. Emphasis. I always explain qad is like pounding the fist on the table. When I'm talking and I pound my fist on the podium, what does that tell you? I'm saying, I mean what I'm saying. I'm talking about something serious. The qad, and when you hear that in Arabic, the way it even sounds, qad, it's very powerful sounding. It echoes. It's thick, it has a thick sound. That's exactly the meaning of it. It serves as an emphasis. So it's an emphasizer. لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلِ Haq means, at the root of the word, I explained this last year in one of the tafsir lessons, it means that which is stable, that which is constant, that which is solid. But it also comes in the meaning of that which is reality. That which happens, is confirmed. There's no doubt about it. Allah says that al-qawl, the word, the, 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 the word or the saying, the decision, has been confirmed. Ala akfarihim upon most of them. Now what does that mean, the word or the saying, the decision has been confirmed upon them? What is this qawl that Allah is talking about? So in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the story of Adam and Iblis. Adam and Iblis. When Allah created Adam, alayhi salam, Allah commanded the angels, malaika, to make sujood to Adam, alayhi salam, Iblis, Shaytan, he refused. And he was arrogant. And he said, I'm not going to. And he argued with Allah. He, he was arrogant, he argued, he denied, he refused, disobeyed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended up, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended up casting him off. He cast him off, cursed him, sent him away from his mercy. And Shaytan, Iblis requested to be given time till the day of judgment to do what? He said, I will lead all of these human beings astray. This human being that you wanted me to bow down to, I commit my life, Shaytan said, to leading them all astray. He said, I'm going to come at them from in front of them, from behind them, from the right of them, from the left of them. I'll do what it takes to lead them astray, and you will end up seeing that the majority of them will not be grateful to you. He said this to Allah. He swore by Allah, I swear by your power that I will lead them astray. That's how arrogant and insistent he was. That's how stubborn Shaytan was. So when this transpired between uh, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Iblis and Shaytan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended up cursing Shaytan. And one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him is, قَالَ فَالْحَقْ وَالْحَقَّ أَقُولُ He said, the reality, the truth, the truth that I'm telling you, what, it is, what is it? لَأَمْلَأَنَّ جَهَنَّمَ مِنْكَ وَمِنْ مَنْ تَبِعَكَ مِنْهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ Surah Al-Sahr. He said, Allah says, I most definitely will fill up Jahannam with you and all those people that end up following you. Anybody that chooses to follow you and not the path that I have laid out for them, Allah says, I will fill up Jahannam with you and with everybody who ended up following you and leaving the straight path. And so the story of Shaitan occurs in seven places. Iblis and Adam occur seven places in the Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-A'raf, Surah Al-Hijr, Surah Al-Isra, or Surah Bani Isra'il, Surah Al-Kahf, Surah Taha, and then finally Surah Saad. And so in Surah Saad here, those are the ayat that I mentioned. And even at the end of Surah Yaseen in ayah number 70 itself, Allah says, وَيَحِقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ that the punishment has been decided and decreed upon those people who are ungrateful and disbelieve in Allah. So al qawl means Allah's decision to punish these people, to cast these people into the hellfire. So Allah says, لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَىٰ That decision has been confirmed upon the majority of these people that you are giving the da'wah to, that you are giving the message to. فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Therefore, these people will not believe. Don't expect these people to end up believing. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So to kind of recap, and then I'll give you the conclusion of these three ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet this Qur'an, He's telling humanity, this Qur'an has been sent down, peace at a time, from Allah Aziz al-Rahim, the dominating and the most merciful, the constantly merciful. And then Allah said, tells the Prophet why did Allah send this Qur'an to Muhammad sallallahu So that you can warn the people who their forefathers had not been warned, that's why they are lost in their heedlessness. They're astray, they're completely lost. Then finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, By the way, لَقَلْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِهِمْ The reality of the matter is that the decision, Jahannam has been confirmed for the majority of these people, فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ They will not believe. This is mudari'a. This includes the future tense. Don't expect these people to end up believing. Now, in conclusion, there, one question remains. When Allah is telling the Prophet Allah, the dominating and the merciful, send the Qur'an down so you can warn people, then why tell him, by the way, decisions already uh, been made for majority of these people. Majority of them are going to go to hellfire, they'll be punished, and don't expect these people to believe. Why tell the Prophet Because these ayat, as I mentioned yesterday in the introduction, these are a consolation to the Prophet in Makkah, the Prophet ﷺ dealt with a lot of difficulty, a lot of stubbornness. I mean, it was very hard to gain some traction in Makkah. The second they took a few steps ahead, these people would, would just lay down a heavy blow. And these people would become even more stubborn and uh, arrogant and aggressive and even violent. So it was very difficult to keep up the morale of the Muslims. And the Prophet ﷺ himself would have very difficult moments. So to keep up his spirits, to let him know that listen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over these people and Allah is making the decision for these people who are behaving in this way with you. So it's his consolation to the Prophet The other thing that it also does is the reason why Allah is telling the Prophet don't wait for these people to believe is because the Prophet embodied an unbelievably amazing quality. And this is a very special quality. The quality to blame yourself for what goes wrong. You know, some people are different. Some people, when something goes wrong, somebody else's fault. Anybody else's but mine. And I think as a collective, the Muslim Ummah, that's the majority of our mindset. Anything that goes wrong with Muslims, it's got to be somebody else's fault. Because, you know, we didn't, we didn't do that. We, 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 that's not how we roll. But, the, the person who's really special, he blames himself for everything that goes on. It's actually a great quality. It's, it's a very selfless quality. It's an amazing quality of empathy and sympathy and compassion to blame yourself. And the Prophet of embodied this quality like no other human being. Like no other human being. Allah had to tell the Prophet in Surah Al-Kahf, 
إِلَّمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ يَسَفَرَ You're going to destroy yourself because these people don't believe. Out of grief and sorrow that these people don't understand what you're delivering to them, you'll kill yourself. You'll destroy yourself. Take it easy. Imagine that Allah is telling the Prophet ﷺ, take it easy. At the, at the situation of Ta'if, we don't have time to get into the story of Ta'if, but Ta'if is a very jarring, it's a very powerful moment from the life of the Prophet ﷺ. He went through a lot on that day. They stoned him, they humiliated him, they pelted him, they made him bleed from his body. To the point where he fell unconscious eventually. But when he went through this entire ordeal and got a moment's, he got a moment's respite, a moment's worth of rest and peace and calm away from these people, and he had an opportunity to make dua to Allah, did he say these horrible, disgusting, arrogant, disrespectful people of Allah? They did this, destroyed them? No. The Prophet ﷺ's supplication is recorded, and subhanAllah, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. He said, Allahumma ashku ilayka du'afa quwwati. He said, Oh Allah, I complain to you, I complain to you of my own weakness. Wa qillata hiyati. I complain to you of my lack of resources, creativity, effort. Wa hawani ala nas. And I complain to you of the lack of res my respect in the eyes of people. That I'm not very well respected amongst people. That's why they didn't listen. They didn't listen because the message is missing something. They didn't listen, they didn't refuse the message because of you, or because the message wasn't good enough, or even because of themselves. It's me. I'm the problem, Ya Allah. I messed up. Please forgive me. To be that giving, that generous, that kind, that forgiving, that's how the Prophet ﷺ was. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have to console him with the Qur'an. Allah would have to sometimes tell him, it's okay, relax. Allah would have to tell him, you know these people, they're not gonna listen, just, they're not gonna believe. Stop killing yourself. Stop just destroying yourself. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ was. And that's inshallah where we'll go ahead and end today. لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَىٰ أَثَرِهِمْ so today we did ayahs number 5, 6, and 7. Inshallah we'll continue tomorrow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to practice everything that's been said and heard. And as a reminder, since we're still in the first couple of days, Inshallah it's only three ayahs. Remember, try to stay on top of the memorization. Alright, if you sway, go, oh, weekend's coming up. By that time it'll be 10, 12 ayahs, then it starts to get out of control a little. Three ayahs a day, very practical. Everybody can do it, Inshallah. Try to keep on top of the target, Inshallah. May Allah give us the ability. سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ولا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب